So this video that I'm going to make is uh, something that people have been kind of asking for, and that is uh, how to make a bass tune or how to do a basic tune. Now, one of the things I'm going to start off with is that I already have videos out there that exist that tell you how to do the basic transmission tuning for these vehicles. Um, I have tuning that tells you how to do the math tuning and tuning to teach you how to do virtual volumetric efficiency. Now, all three of those are also important videos, and I highly recommend to watch them as well, uh, because especially because the transmission tuning is going to be a big part of this bass tune. I'm not going to go over it in this video because it would just be redundant at that point. So, here's a 05 Silverado I just did. Um, it had factory 31 inch tires, 342 gears, um, 4L60 E transmission. So I did a transmission tune based on that using the BD Trans tool, um, which you can see in my other videos. So that's that's pretty simple. So we're gonna go through here and we'll look at the things that I changed. Now this is just a base tune. Base tune is a guy calls me up, says, "Hey, I want to get my truck tuned. I have a few mods that I, I but nothing crazy. This truck, all it had was a." long tube headers and and that, that's it exhaust somewhat so so first thing what you're going to see is i use the compare function between the regular file and the tune file so anything that shows up that is green uh, is going to be from a change between this file and the tune file um, which also the i do have a video explaining how to use a compare function as well you'll notice all this is blue here haven't changed anything here haven't changed anything here Airflow, didn't touch anything with the airflow. Do not touch anything to do with the electric throttle. Just just save yourself the headache and leave those tables alone. Exhaust, uh, if it has an EGR, make sure you have that disabled. Fuel, nothing here. Uh, when you would have to do injectors, your injectors are going to be this table here. Sorry, this table here, which we'll make a video for that shortly. Um, oxygen sensors, uh, sometimes there are changes that you need to make uh, for having long tube headers because the oxygen sensor is farther down the exhaust stream. Not really worried about that right now. Um, it's not a huge deal. Power enrichment. If you have, I, I like to use a lot of this pedal control. So this is what it looks like stock. You need 90% pedal in order to have throttle enrichment, meaning heavy load, light RPM, you get no throttle enrichment, that's kind of a danger zone for vehicles. A truck that is going to tow sometimes but not tow a lot, 30% pedal. A truck that does a lot of towing, 45 to 60% pedal because driving on the highway sometimes, small hills, there's enough of a load that it puts you in power enrichment mode when you don't, when you might not need it. Now, you can change it per RPM as well. You know, you can make that pedal higher, pedal lower. That's up to you. RPM. The delay is 5,000 RPMs. I always make it 1,200. Some sports cars, I'll make it down to zero. I get rid of the delay. Enrichment. Good place to start off with enrichment for me for most vehicles is a one. Um, it's what seems to work. I don't have issues with the vehicle running too rich. I've seen vehicles with two there. I've seen vehicles with three there. That is the rate at how fast it is going to add extra fuel. I don't really like to go above one unless it's a heavily modified vehicle. So this is what you have here for fuel. You take 14.7 divided by 1.148 and it'll give you the air fuel ratio for right there. So this is the tune file. Now, what I did on this one was I added a percentage. So a lot of times, I think I just added 5%. Uh, on trucks, I like to be over 1.2 on the air fuel ratio. Trucks need a lot more fuel than cars do, mainly because of the weight. So let's take 14.7 divided by 1.255, 11.7 to 1. This is 11.7 to 1. This is closer to lower 11s. Uh, a car, 12.8 to 1 is perfect. Sometimes 12.6 to 1. This, again, is up to you. Temperature control. Get rid of catalyst protection. Gone. 
engine cutoff speed, I always put the cutoff higher than you ever expect to go, uh, mainly because when you're racing, sometimes your transmission can miss the shift point, and if you bounce off the rim limiter, you are going to lose time in the quarter mile. So this is 6,000 everywhere. I have it set to 6,500, 6,500. 6500 here gear based as well 6500 now this truck i only have it shifting at 6100 now keep in mind park neutral reverse these don't need to be this high you can set those as low as you want don't touch lean savings i don't touch transient we don't touch flex fuel spark you want your truck or car to sound like it has a cam. Now remember, this is a Gen 3 vehicle, so I'll make sure that I say that in the video. This is a basic tune for a Gen 3 Silverado. Over speed. All I did was add negative 10. Under speed, all I did was add positive 10. This gives it a nice, healthy, slightly cam sound, but nothing too aggressive. Octane. This is something that you're going to have to kind of figure out on your own. Now, I'm going to use my mouse here. You start off from a dead stop. You hit the throttle, okay? As you hit the throttle, the vehicle is going to come kind of through here. And as it gets close to the 50 or 60 mark, depending on how much compression the motor has how, and the cam, it's going to kind of start coming this way, okay? Now, notice, as soon as it gets close to like 80, all this timing falls off. Most motors are going to want 18 to 24 degrees of timing at wide open throttle in order to make power. This is one of the reasons why GM trucks make way more power after just a simple tune. Now this is the high octane table. Come look at the low octane table. Look how low this is. I mean, if you go into this table right here, you're not making crap for power. If you're going to run 87... You're going to want to mod modify both tables separately. Okay. Now, if a customer is going to run 91 and they swear they're going to run 91 on both, then it's not an issue to copy the high octane table to the low octane table and just make one table. Uh, I'm not really going to give a huge explanation on what to do here. A second. Okay. So, this is the timing that was used on this vehicle. Okay. This is, we're going into 22 degrees at wide open throttle. We got a lot more timing down here. One of the things you're going to notice is that if you find through logging where your vehicle do, does the most highway speeds, so let's say it's 2,000 by 36, and let's say it's 24 degrees. Well, let's find out what it is there. So 27 degrees. Let's say this is where you're always on the highway and you're like, damn, I want better gas mileage. Add a couple degrees here and see if your instant gas mileage is any different at the exact speed. That helps set a dyno because you can find the maximum spark that you can make the most torque on because that's where you're going to be the most efficient. Um, I recommend adding anywhere from 1 to 3 degrees to that spot into that area. Uh, but keep an eye out for knock retard because as you get up to the maximum torque, maximum spark torque, you are going to get closer to risking having knock retard anytime there's a heavy load right there. So 1 to 3 degrees is about as all you're going to want to go. Don't touch the torque model, torque management. RPM versus gear is typically always maxed out. On the older, it's 640, and the new truck, 6402 or 420, whatever. So I move that table to 640. Okay, don't mess with any of these other limits. This is something that you want to do on your own, and if you do change something, do it very little. Do not touch any of these tables right here. Do not just leave these alone. Okay, you can mess with some of these a little bit. But don't touch this table. This can put you in reduced power mode by making even the smallest changes. Engine, I don't touch the engine. I don't touch the drivetrain abuse. Okay, we go to the speedometer. We um, change the limiters, get rid of the limiters for them. We can go to the fans. You can change the fan speeds for them. Regular fan, AC. Fuel system, don't really mess with that unless they put a different size gas tank in it. Like I said, there's a video for the transmission. Engine diagnostics. Anytime you do any type of a ghost cam or real cam on a vehicle, you need to remove the vehicle's ability to read misfires 
under a specific RPM, which is typically 1,200 RPM and less, because it will set a misfire all the time because of the, the cam loping or the overlap. The cam lope sound is actually a misfire, so it will register misfire because it is a misfire. So you're going to want to change some of these tables, uh, like this one. I just get rid of it completely, max it out. Max this one out as well, because like I said, under 1200, and then I do 1200 there. If your vehicle is misfiring under 1200 RPMs, even with a cam, you will be able to hear it. You will notice it. Um, so it's not something that you have to be crazy to worry about. Okay, then you're going to look down here at codes. There's only a couple of codes that you're typically going to get rid of. Um, P420, P430, these are both for cats. Uh, I just mark them to no error. Like obviously I can't I can't go back to the compare function and look because it's not going to show you. But I go to 420 and 430, I move them to no error. He had all the evaporative emissions removed, so we got rid of all codes for the evaporative emissions. But overall, that right there is a basic tune for a Gen 3 pickup truck. Depending on how good you are with your timing file, you can pick anywhere from 15 to 35 horse up just with this tune. Um, and it's not nothing's aggressive about it. So if you have any questions, feel free to message me or ask me. Um, and if you're interested in us making any specific videos explaining anything else, uh, just let me know. I have no problem making a video for something.